Niels Bohr interpreted these observations and created a new model. Notice, the observations were not changed. You needed a new model. And this new model of the atom explained the existence of the emission spectra, the different colored light coming out, and provided a framework for where the electrons can exist around the nucleus. Bohr then proposed that this pesky little n here, it defined permitted, notice it's in quotes, permitted electron orbits around the nucleus. So electrons could orbit the nucleus just like the planets orbit the Sun, but only at permitted radii. For example, you've got this first orbit here, n equals 1, so that's an electron orbit. Uh, here's the question, why can't we see the nucleus? Well, that's really incredibly tiny, way, way smaller than that little dot. So when you look at these circles, those are electron orbits. These radii increase in proportion to n squared, which is the same n squared that the three scientists came up with, Posh and Lyman. And the orbits get much, much larger as n increases. So you can see how n equals 4. See the gap between 3 and 4? that's greater than the gap between 3 and 2 and between 2 and 1. Bohr's model did not allow for electrons to exist here. They had to be in this blue orbit, this green, this red, and again the colors are just to help us look at them, and in here. You could not find an electron here, for example, or an electron here. And he said that when they were in these orbits, they would not radiate energy. That's kind of a problem because that violates the rules of electromagnetism since orbiting charges should radiate energy. But Bohr said somehow these rules don't apply to electrons in these orbits. Bohr then postulated that electrons would radiate or absorb energy when they move between the permitted orbitals. So you could go from n equals 1 to n equals 2 never really said how they would get there because you, the electrons weren't allowed here in the space between the orbitals. And we have each orbital representing a different energy level. The energy of the light emitted, that's when you lose energy, or absorbed, when the electrons gain energy, is equal to the difference in the starting and, ener and ending energy level of the electron. So let's just say what, what that's talking about here. Here's Balmer's equation. And you can see we have a subtraction here. Right? We have this n, which is the number of your orbital, and then we have this 2. So it looks like we have electrons moving between an n equals, well, here, 3, 4, etc. level, and the 2 level. Right? Here's n equals 2, here's n equals 3, and n equals 4. Because we know that energy is proportional to 1 over the wavelength. So this theory here is based on this formula that, was com that came up from Balmer. But what are the energy levels for each n? Again, n just integers 1, 2, 3, etc. There is an energy level designated E sub n. The ground state of an atom is its lowest energy level, where n is equal to 1. And we will call that E sub 1. Then E sub 2 will be the next energy level. That's when n is equal to 2. Bohr showed that the energy of an energy level, E sub n, is equal to E1, all right, that's the lowest energy level, divided by n squared. So the energy of the second energy level, E2, is found by plugging n equal 2 into the equation and finding out that the energy level, E sub 2, is equal to E sub 1 divided by 4. 